This week you join us as we continue our van life adventures through northern Spain and Portugal. But things take a turn for the worse as we get some bad news. We just got confirmation from a garage. Our alternator has died. So sit back, relax and let's get into the video. Good afternoon everyone, it's a new day and we've finally crossed over the border from France and into northern Spain. If you can't tell, it's still really cold. So we woke up this morning to a frost and we had to de-ice the entire van pretty much. It's not frosty here, but it's still really, really cold. But we are still trying to chase the sun. We'll find it one day. <laughs> Come back in 2025 to find it. <laughs> So we didn't just stop as soon as we got over the border. We've traveled about two hours into Spain and we've arrived in Santander this afternoon. And we've basically stopped in this motorhome area just outside of the city. And it seems really, really good. So I think we'll head into Santander and show you what there is to see there. We are so excited to be back in Spain. We both have Spanish backgrounds, so we love exploring new parts of this gorgeous country. The first stop on the list, Santander. Santander is a port city located in the northern coast of the Iberian Peninsula and has a population of about 172,000. The city's port dates back to ancient times, however much of the medieval city was lost in the Great Fire of 1941. Today, its old town, beaches and stunning architecture make it a popular tourist destination, especially in the summer months. If you're doing a European road trip, it is possible to catch a ferry from the UK directly to Santander However, its crossing is over 32 hours, so bear that in mind when planning your next trip. We've left Santander this morning in search of some sun, and as you can probably tell, we didn't exactly find it. It's actually worse weather here than it was in France a few days ago. But that is not stopping us. We are making our way ever closer to Portugal across the northern west point of Spain and we stopped in a little town called Riba de Seja today which I found on Park for Night. I'll put a screenshot up on the screen in a moment of where we are. So let's give you a closer look what this town has to offer. The small town of Riba de Seja is located in the Asturias region of northern Spain. With its quaint streets and amazing coastal views, it's clear why thousands of people visit every year. The town is made up of two halves on either side of the Seya River, connected by a bridge. It's most commonly known for being the home of the Tito Bustillo Cave, a UNESCO World Heritage Site which contains wall paintings dating back to over 29,000 years. Unfortunately, we didn't get to visit during our time here, but it's definitely worth a visit. Taking a hike up to one of the town's viewpoints brings you to a small chapel with amazing views of the rugged coastline and also a panoramic view of the town's two halves and its beaches. There we go, that is the small town of Riba de Seja. So the weather's not the best today, as we've said, so we're going to go to the supermarket, get some bread, head back to... <laughs> and apparently a bottle of wine. And then we're going to head back to the van, relax for the evening, and then we'll pick you up tomorrow as we head further west. Bye! Okay, good morning everyone. We've left the small town of Riba de Seja this morning, and we've come 10 minutes up the road. This is a through road to a little town beyond this mountain, but apparently this cave is quite a tourist attraction in the summer. Luckily we've got it to ourselves today. It's still really cold, but it is slowly getting warmer. Let's hope for a bit of sun in the next few days. I go. So, we're going to check this cave out. We're about to get in there, <laughs> was the 
sort of natural cave slash through road into this small town. Absolutely spectacular. What a sight to see. The Spanish as a nation love to build tunnels through mountains. Normally when they build these tunnels, very much the same as each other. It's just getting from A to B. But the guys who built this tunnel obviously didn't get the memo, which is probably why this is now quite a big tourist attraction in this area. But when we got to the outside of the tunnel, we must have traveled a lot further than we expected. <laughs> and if you are unsure of exactly how cold it is Snow. So we're gonna head back through this tunnel back to the van and then on to the next stop of the day Which is quite a popular viewpoint on top of one of these mountains. Maybe there's gonna be snow Well, we've ascended the side of a mountain to get to where we are now, which is Fitu Viewpoint. And this is a rather unique one because it's got a raised observation deck, so you can get the best view of the landscape. Unfortunately, it's a pretty cloudy day today, so the views aren't the best, but they are still spectacular. And I can only imagine how good they'd be on a clear day. But to give you the best view of the place, it's time to get the drone out. The Fitu viewpoint stands at an altitude of 1,100 metres, which provides a unique glance at a large part of the Asturias region, giving views of the snow-capped mountains to the small coastal towns and northern Spain's white sandy beaches. Its main attraction is the old concrete watchtower, which has now been reinvented as an observation deck to take in the stunning landscape. We left Vitu Viewpoint and hit the road, heading to the capital city of the Asturias region, Oviedo. You drive in. With a population of 220,000 and famous for its old architecture, Oviedo stands as one of the most popular cities to visit in northern Spain. Well, hello. I'm picking you up for the first time today at almost five o'clock in the evening. And there's a very good reason for that. But we left our pack up from last night and headed into the city of Oviedo. Yeah, since then, it's been a bit of an ordeal. So let's tell you about it. But before we tell you the story of what's happened today, let's show you what this pack up looks like. Okay, let's give you a rundown of the day's events. It's not been a great day. No, it's been one of those days where everything seems to have gone wrong on us. We dropped ourselves down into the city and found a park up that said it was nice and safe. But when we got there, we knew we weren't going to stay the night there. We ended up just parking the van there just to go and see the city, which was a little bit sketchy in itself. I don't really know how to explain it, but somebody kicked their shoe at us and then threw a grape at us, had a couple of words said to us in Spanish, but obviously we actually know a bit of Spanish, so we knew what she was saying. So this isn't really a reflection on the city itself, it's just we weren't getting amazing vibes from there. Yeah, we decided to leave the park that we were in and head to one of Spain's airs, which was just outside of the city. It was a very similar vibe to in the city. It was not good vibes. It didn't feel safe. And if you don't feel good in a place, don't stay in a place. We decided to find another park up. We found one on park for night. Looked like ridiculous, like too good to be true, <laughs> which it was. We took the drive up there, which in itself was 
awful. awful. And we got to the last turn in that Google Maps told us to take, and then we ended up being off road completely. And then a lovely guy who was basically looking after the area. He was running after the van. Basically, there was this little hut that he was in. I drove past it, but we could hear him shouting, running after the van, saying, it's private property and we can't be there. That was pack up number three, which turned out to be a massive fail. So it was back on to pack for night to look for another pack up. And we found one 20 minutes away in a town, which was basically just another Spanish air. And that gave us even more dodgy vibes. There was a lady there. I mean, she could have been a lovely lady, fair thing to her. She, <laughs> she, she could have been somebody's lovely grand. As we were like driving into like the car parking bit, she was glaring at us with the two crutches in a little dressing gown in the middle of the street. So, mm. So we probably left there, meaning now we'd we be- We are not like park up snobs. We no, just, um, we're not park up snobs at all. No. Like we wouldn't mind staying in the car park of a little overnight. Like oh, yeah. it really wouldn't bother us. We have been spoiled since coming over into France and definitely into Spain with the park ups we've had. But the park ups we've been going to today just weren't the one. The park up we were at earlier marks number four for the day. So Rosie jumped on park for night and found the park up we're at now, which thankfully has turned out to be absolutely fine. We've had a little bucket shower. <laughs> Now we're gonna have some food. Well, good afternoon everyone. It's been quite a few days since we last picked you up and I'm pleased to say that we've arrived in Portugal, which marks the third country on the list of 11 countries that we've got to visit on this European trip. Now it may seem that we've arrived in Portugal rather abruptly and to be totally honest, we have. I plan on sitting down a little bit later on to talk about the nightmare that we've had over the last couple of days. But until then, let's give you a look at some of the gorgeous architecture in one of Portugal's oldest cities, Braga. Braga, also known as Portuguese Rome, is the oldest city in Portugal and one of the oldest worldwide, with over 2,000 years of history. Taking a walk through the city provides views of its studied architecture around every corner. Interestingly, a study on quality of life found that Braga is the happiest city in Portugal and the third happiest in Europe. When passing through Portugal, you may want to head straight for the capital, but we would highly recommend paying Braga a visit first. That is Braga in Portugal, and for our first time in Portugal, and certainly our first city, that is going to be hard to top. You may notice the absence of Rosie this afternoon. She's not feeling the best, so she stayed in the van while I headed down into Braga. So, I think it's time to catch you up on the disaster that we've had over the last couple of days. So, after the nightmare of the day that we had trying to find park-ups and ending the day on our fifth park-up, we thought we were just having one of those days where just everything seemed to go wrong. However, the next day seemed to get a whole lot worse. So we woke up the next day and the weather was still not on our side and we were driving to quite a scenic pack up for the evening when I looked down at the dash and our battery light on the van had come on. So we quickly pulled over, researched what it could be. The one thing that kept coming up was a alternator issue. So our plan was to basically head down into the city of Lugo. But the only issue is this was Saturday. And if you don't know Spanish culture, or European culture for that matter, nothing is really open on a weekend. And we basically just decided to head to Lugo, set up for the evening, and try and fix the problem the next day. So, on our drive to Lugo, the battery light was still on, and then 15 minutes later, it magically disappears. So we pulled over again, and I checked the voltages to our battery, and everything seemed to be running absolutely fine. But as we continued our drive, Every now and again, the battery light would flash on and off. So, we were not having the best of days. So, with it being an issue that was kind of intermittent, we just decided to head off from Lugo, leaving all the garages behind and head into Portugal and just keep an eye on the issue, really. And that was a few days ago. And since then, the weather has been absolutely awful. I know we're traveling in January and obviously the winter months are not going to be anywhere near as nice as the summer months but it's been a little bit ridiculous. It's been raining and misty, windy, cold every single day. So truthfully, we haven't really left the van that much other than driving to our next packer for the evening to try and chase the sun. The van still isn't fixed and we still don't know what the issue is, but we are probably gonna try and troubleshoot it ourselves or bite the bullet and head to a garage to get it fixed there. 
we just got confirmation from a garage that our alternator has died. After a day in the garage and our van troubles finally being fixed, we left with a new alternator and headed for Portugal's capital, Porto. Porto is known for its massive bridges stretching across the Douro River and like many other European cities, the architecture here is spectacular. Leaving Porto, we decided to head to the coast as we thought the weather may soon be taking a turn for the better. And the next day, sun! It felt so good to finally be kissed by the Portuguese sun after almost two weeks on the road. Well, our bad luck seems to finally be over. We managed to get the van into the garage. So we got it fixed the next day. The only bad thing is it sets back about 400 euros. <laughs> but I guess that's uh, something you've got to deal with when you're basically living and traveling in your van. But that's a thing of the past now because the sun is absolutely beaming. So we stayed in a free pack up for the night, the night before last. And then we came to a lovely campsite just behind the, the dunes of the beach. I'll put a screenshot of the campsite we stayed in last night and I'll also put the what three words just alongside it. So if you want to come here yourself and get these amazing views, then you can. Just look at this. This is exactly what we wanted from our van life trip through Europe. I think it's time to check this beach out. As we walked along the golden sands and listened to the crashing waves of Portugal's west coast, we were reminded just how lucky we are to be on the road together in our camper van. It's very windy and a little bit cold, but we finally found some sand. Living life in the slow lane and experiencing different cultures makes us so grateful for what we have. And to experience this with our four-legged friend makes everything so much more special. One of the realities of van life in action, constantly sweeping the floor. We've done this four times today already. We ended this amazing day in a beachfront bar, enjoying a couple of local drinks while watching a mesmerising sunset. I've come down this morning just to give Lola a bit of a run before we head off on our drive for the day and it is absolutely stunning. There's not much wind and the sun, <laughs> it's just beating down. Now I'm not a surfer by any standard, but if I was, these waves are spectacular. It's a little bit bittersweet leaving this slice of paradise behind today, but as is the running theme with these videos, we're heading further south to get some miles in because although we're going day by day and just going wherever the wind takes us we have got a rough schedule to stick to we're doing two and a half hours today down to just outside of Lisbon Sintra area we've got a free park up for the evening on a cliff that looks lovely so we should get another amazing sunset but before we head down there we've got to do a shop because we're running low on supplies the last time we did a shop was in northern Spain so we've got to get a few bits and I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go. If you watched our France vlog, then you'll know that we're both uh, vegetarian and Rosie's lactose intolerant. And finding things for us to eat and lactose-free milk, for example, was relatively easy in Northern Spain and in France. But I don't know if the same can be said for Portugal. So we're not going to be doing much today, but I'll definitely pick you up when we get to our park up for the evening and show you another amazing sunset.
Well, we did the two and a half hour drive down to our parking for the evening, expecting it to be beautiful sunshine like it was where we were this morning. But unfortunately, it's cloudy, but it's still a cracking view. I won't show you that. Oh my god, Lola. I think we're just gonna get the van nice and clean, ready to film the van tour in the next couple of days. I say we're gonna clean it, it's not me that's cleaning it. The weather seemed to improve a little as the evening went on, with the sun rays peeking through the clouds. We got the van nice and tidy, and luckily got to see another glorious sunset together. Well, after a nice sleep on that cliff last night, we woke up bright and early to catch the sunrise and then we headed out onto the road yet again and our prayers from last night have obviously been answered as you can probably tell the weather is absolutely stunning as we're heading south we had quite a uh, full schedule today we were going to go into Sintra National Park do a nice dog walk and then head to uh, Castle en route and just check that out but we quickly realised that we had no hope of parking in Sintra National Park because it's a Sunday and everyone and their dog seem to be out doing exactly the same thing. So we decided to just get some miles in and head further south. We arrived in the small western town of Sines, just south of Lisbon, where we were treated to some nice warm weather and blue skies. We relaxed by the van, enjoyed the beaming sunshine and then headed out once again to watch the sunset with a new four-legged friend. Well, since we arrived at this park up, we've just been relaxing in the van and watching everyone make an absolute hash of parking in the parking lot we're in tonight. Luckily, Dory is the size that she is because she is tiny. Yeah, we've seen uh, these big six, seven, eight metre motorhomes try and come in and it's only a small space. So this is one of the very few occasions we're glad of how small the van actually is. So we're just chilling here, watching the sun go down, and I think tomorrow we're gonna head down on another big drive down to the Algarve to start the next chapter of our adventure. And with that, I think we're gonna wrap this episode of our European adventure up. Like always, we really hope you did enjoy watching this video. So if this is one of the first videos that you've seen of ours, please consider subscribing down below to see all the upcoming videos from our European adventure. If you've got any comments or suggestions about places we should visit in the south of Portugal and the south of Spain, then please drop them down below. So, stay tuned for the next one, but until then, we'll catch you next time.